All right, I think I think we are live. Hey, World Bible School University students, uh, this is your professor, Apostle Jermaine Thomas, and I'm going to uh, kind of lay out week four's assignment. Uh, I'm excited, you guys. We have tracked um, from weeks one to week four very, very fast, <laughs> and next week will be our final. Uh, and so you can look at uh, week four kind of as a prep for how uh, we're going to go in week five. Um, so give me a second here. And let me bring up these notes and go over a few things I think that is important um, as you guys look over the syllabus uh, itself. So. What you will notice is something a little different um, with respect to the lecture notes. Uh, toward the end, there's also a uh, there's a syllabus that's on the lecture notes there. Um, uh oh, let me. Sorry for all the little quirky noise in the background. Let me silence some of this stuff. So, if you notice on the the syllabus. So um, at the end, there is a rubric and the rubric uh, is there to show you guys uh, the grading scale and how I will be grading the assignments. Um, and so it's imperative that as you do the writing assignment, you say write an assignment. Yes, write an assignment. <laughs> I know you guys have enjoyed the quizzes and reviewing the lecture notes and the, uh, the videos, the supplemental videos um, in what I will consider to be uh, subject uh, expert subjects, uh, what is it? Subject experts, right? <laughs> uh, on on the matter to supplement the content uh, for this particular course because there is no uh, 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 actual um, class book on this particular subject, rest versus warfare. Um, so this is kind of my own research. Uh, and putting these uh, materials together for you guys to kind of track along the thoughts and the thinking that I wanted to cover in M1304 Rest versus Warfare uh, in this particular class. It's a fairly new class. I hope you guys can hear me really good. I'm coming in loud and clear. Uh, and so I just want to start with the course description. Uh, this course is an exploration into the popular Christian ideas and doctrine of spiritual warfare. Spiritual warfare could be defined as a Christian concept of fighting against the work of pre, uh, pre uh, these uh, evil forces or mystical beings, if you will. It is based on the biblical belief in evil spirits or demons that are said to intervene in human affairs in various ways. Various Christian groups have adopted practices to repel such forces. Um, as based on their doctrine of Christian demon, demonology. Uh, this course would explore the premise and larger worldview of this doctrine. Uh, students can expect to evaluate the short and long-term implications of these Christian ideas. Students would identify and understand key theological terms as it pertains to the subject matter of rest versus warfare. And students can expect to be established in a more Christ-centric understanding OK, and so uh, and then we covered in week one, uh, what is dualism? Week two, uh, spiritual warfare doctrine. Week three, demons, devils or something else. And now we're in week four, uh, which is we rest in Christ. And so even in week five, you can also expect I want to do a full review, go through the lecture notes and to prepare you and prep you. Uh, for your final for week five. So don't get that nervous, guys, okay? <laughs> um, and so in week four uh, lecture notes, you'll notice there's uh, um, two books that I quoted from. Uh, one is from uh, Martin Trench's book, Eyes Wide Open. And uh, another quote or section is from our own uh, professor, uh, Apostle Brian Christian, uh, in his book as well. Um, and so I really want to capture these two thoughts and his book is the everlasting gospel of Christ identity from an internal perspective. A very awesome book uh, to have. And if you have the capacity and ability uh, to purchase these resources, I would uh, strongly encourage you to do so. Um, and so 
I, I put those two ideas in here uh, as a, a continued framework to help guide you guys um, into gathering your ideas, your thoughts, um, given the material and the content that we covered uh, from weeks one to week four. Uh, and so I, I didn't want to overwhelm you a lot with a lot of content in week four because of this writing assignment. I really want you to focus on uh, this writing assignment. I want you to take I want you to go review uh, the lecture notes. OK, I think it's important. Um, it's easy for me as a professor to just throw stuff at you, content and material at you. Um, but I think that. And, and then give you quizzes to kind of gauge where you guys are. And all of you have done exceptionally well uh, on those quizzes. And, and those quizzes are for me to gauge whether you're grasping um, the course content and material and subject matter that's being shared there. Um, so this is an opportunity for you. Uh, uh, and I feel that as World Bible School students and just uh, 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 university students of higher education, uh, that your voice is Im important. And if you ever took any other class with me, then you'll understand that, uh, or if you're new to me as your professor, I really want you to understand, and you will see this in other classes and courses that you will take with me in the future, is, is that I want to empower your voice as a, a student, a Christian, a believer, because many of you may go on to the doctorate program and, um, and and write a thesis uh, or write a book or, you know, be inspired to write a book. Um, and so as, as your professor, it's incumbent upon me to to gauge you in that way, to draw out those critical thinking skills, to draw out uh, the, the well, the depth and the well of, of what father has put in you and bring that up to the surface uh, so that you can shine bright and be that light you know, of, of, of understanding and, and clarity and be a voice of clarity and understanding uh, to those that are around you and those that you have influence over. Uh, and so uh, this is my heart when it comes to writing assignments. And so I want you to consider that as you go through weeks one and weeks four uh, lesson plan, the content that I place, uh, uh, the two particular thoughts and perspectives um, that was presented by Martin Trenton uh, Dr. Martin Trenton and what was presented by Apostle Brian Christian, in addition to all the other course material and video lectures, uh, it, because when you rehearse the material um, and the content and then Holy Spirit comes in and he just, you know, your mind may be shifting on certain perceptions. You say, hey, I never looked at it like that. I never thought about it like that. Um, or questions may arise uh, that may lead to more questions. And so I don't like to give definitive answers, but more so responses, because we're all growing. We're all learning. We're all becoming better informed to get a greater sense of clarity. And so I want to cover uh, enough course content material in a way that help us meet uh, that course objective. Um, and so the course writing assignment uh, for you all is uh, is in the it's outlined in the uh, in the syllabus as well. Um, and so the course writing assignment is students are to write a one to two page paper, uh, preferably you guys times Romans 12 uh, or others. Just make sure the font is not these weird fonts, uh, because in the past I've had to, you know, correct, uh, uh, you know, draft these and, and redraft them and, and edit them myself. And so please uh, give me less work as possible. Uh, when drafting these assignments, please no huge fonts uh, trying to cover up space. Listen, give me uh, uh, to your credit uh, and for your own benefit, not not for me or pleasing to me, because you are the uh, professional student. Right. Um, and this is a higher learning education. And so uh, I just want to uh, press upon you to uh, to be professional, even in your writing. Um, and so don't use the font, you know, to manipulate space. Um, I'm only asking 500 words or more. So that's a, a one page paper, a two page paper. Um, uh, if you feel to write more, please feel comfortable. I'm not I'm not trying to restrict you um, in, in you expressing yourself. But I, I, I want you to express yourself um, in, in a well 
uh, verse manner. And so please uh, consider that as you write your paper. And I know many may not have access um, uh, to like a Word document, things like that. And so if you have to, so if you have to use WhatsApp or if you have to use email uh, as a means to write your paper, uh, please uh, uh, make it full length, give it substance, give it depth. Um, that's what I'm looking for. It, it you know, uh, grammar is important. Uh, but what I'm looking for more so than anything, I'm looking for your heart and I'm looking and I'm looking to hear your voice um, as the student, because this material is a lot, uh, but it's to help you to shape, give shape and form uh, to your thinking, your capacity to critically think, your capacity to assess, your, your capacity to compare and contrast to what you learn and grow um, and mature in that information and understanding. Um, and so I really want to employ you with that. Um, also, um, I stated here that the title of your paper uh, is Rest Versus Warfare. And um, in your to write, what does that mean to you? Uh, considering all the material that we covered, like I said before, lectures, notes, and videos, um, also consider the, the things that you come to understand along the way when it comes to spiritual warfare um, or come to understanding your identity in Christ with respect to the scriptures, um, church, your experiences um, and things like that. Um, and then to consider your own personal experiences, uh, your relationship with father, um, your, your relationship as a Christian uh, in, in relation to other believers, your family. Um, and so see the rubric. I have attached the rubric. Um, this is how uh, all our writer assignments will be graded. And so you're to forward all your week four assignments to me, your professor. I will be grading those, not um, not Dr. Fay. Um, uh, so I will be reviewing and grading all those written assignments for this course. OK, class. Um, and so with that, I just want to just um, kind of give you, I think, in my little check in video. Uh, I, I wanted to just check in with you guys and, and to let you know I'm tracking with you um, and things like that. So and, and my sister, Trinita, you know, shared like she felt like <laughs> we felt alone. <laughs> so um, I just want to let you know I'm tracking with you my heart when it came to preparing this content material. Uh, and so I'm going to share a few things and then I'm going to leave it there. There's another secondary video. Um, by uh, Joseph Prince. That's an animated video. And I just think that it's really, really powerful. Just something to consider, just something to think about, um, to provoke us to think um, when when we uh, look at the material. So uh, actually, I'll probably put it in the class room chat uh, itself so that you can know that it's a supplemental video, but it's important to watch it uh, because I think that it adds to the, uh, the, the, the dialogue uh, and the information that I'm trying to shape. And so one of the things, uh, uh, if you notice in the course material, what I was really highlighting or trying to, um, uh, I ain't going to say necessarily attack, uh, but I think bring to light or bring to the forefront. Sometimes we're not always aware um, of, of our Christian thought and thinking because maybe like me, uh, maybe that has maybe this is not your experience. Uh, most of my Christian thought and experience has been, you know, what has been spoon fed to me. Um, what I've been conditioned to believe about scripture rather than what scripture actually says. <laughs> uh, and so uh, whether those are popular ideas in, in various Christian movements, um, in various different Christian streams, um, there seems to be the popular idea and the notion um, of, you know, this dualistic perspective, you know, of good versus evil, that God is here uh, Satan is here and they are two equal opposing forces. Um, and so oftentimes we as Christians, um, because of that type of teaching framing, if you will, we, we become hypersensitive or hyper focused, uh, to looking for the devil or demons around every corner. Um, it has caused us to be subject uh, 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 so, uh, it caused us to be, uh, what's the word I want to use? Uh, suspect. That's it. 
it, it caused us to be suspect uh, of even of our own brothers and sisters in our own fellowship. Uh, how many of us have have been in fellowships? And again, this may not be your experience. This has been mine to a degree uh, that a woman, you know, maybe have a strong prophetic gift, uh, or or maybe she's she's a prophet and, and maybe not mature, and um, uh, because of jealousy, and it may not just be respected to a woman. It has happened to men too. Uh, uh, they they considered a a a. Um, um, Absalom or the woman is considered a Jezebel uh, because the pastor or, or leaders discerned that um, they had a spirit of, 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 you know, rebellion in them, you know, because they didn't go along, right? <laughs> you know, with the conventional thought and thinking uh, of a given set or they question things. And so, um, you know, this these types of things or she has a spirit, he has a spirit, you know, or trying to discern or discernment comes down to, uh, uh, you know, discerning what kind of spirit you got. And we trying to discern what, what kind of spirits each other have, <laughs> you know, and, and we're never in a trusting environment um, or, you know, we we there's this contention um, that I believe is kind of toxic, you know, when you're because it, it, only, it only induces fear and anxiety. Um, how can you truly rest in that? How can you truly find rest, you know, in that type of thinking? Um, or, you know, we'll say, you know, that it's finished, that, you know, with Christ it's finished, that he destroyed principalities and powers. Um, and that principalities and powers have nothing to do, you know, with demons or spirits that had everything to do with uh, the 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 uh, governmental system or the, uh, the theocracy that the children of Israel lived under. Jesus's um, message was to uh, 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 the children of Israel, uh, particularly the Jews, who who lived under this system, the this system of of, of relationship with God. You know, according to these biblical covenants, uh, particular the Mosaic covenant, right? And so that was uh, their relationship with God was built upon these uh, the civic aspects, ceremonial aspects, you know, of temple sacrifices, um, this hierarchy of order um, in relation to God and, and having a relationship with God, you know, through these, through these systems, if you will. Uh, give me one second, class. Let me do something and I'll be right back. OK. <laughs> Okay. All right. All right. That's, that's the benefit of technology. Uh, so, um, so continuing to my thought that, so this is their, um, encounter with God, you know, based upon this systematic approach, um, uh, in relation to him. So there was no reality of rest for them. Um, you know, it was, the, it wasn't just the fair, it wasn't just the, the law of Moses, uh, that they lived under, then you have the, the the Pharisees and the Sadducees, um, and in 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 their understanding, interpretation, you know, of in, uh, Old Testament scripture or the Law of Moses, and so they compounded it and put more laws, <laughs> if you will, uh, of oppression upon the people. So not only did uh, people in Jesus' day uh, or temple uh, practicing Jews, uh, the first temple, second temple. Uh, uh, in particular in Jesus day, uh, uh, the, the Jews of his day, you know, they, these Sadducees and Pharisees, you know, living under them. So not only did they live under, uh, uh, the Mosaic law, uh, they also lived under the interpretation of the Pharisees and Sadducees also under the, uh, oppression of the Roman rule, uh, who occupied their territory at that time. Um, and so, you know, this, these notions and ideas of, of rest, you know, <laughs> you know, that was a foreign notion to them. Um, they only rest was, you know, on the Sabbath, um, the Sabbath, you know, to, to, to cease according to the law of Moses. And so that's where they only seem to find rest in their lives. No, no eternal rest, uh, was there for them because everything was outward, you know, there, it, it was work-based, you know, 
Uh, and so that imagine that imagine coming up um, and living in that type of mindset, you know, day in and day out. And then you have this guy come on the scene and, and tells you that all ye that labor, um, you know, come unto me and find rest. And they're like, what you mean in you is rest? <laughs> you know, but the law says that the Sabbath is rest. Um, and so you, you see these, I'm just trying to just summarize. I'm, I'm really dialing it down a bit, right? Um, and summarize for you uh, just to just to pique your interest um, in that and just to trigger your mind to think um, and considering, you know, um, Jesus's audience of the day, the children of Israel with respect to the content, uh, context, historical context of the scripture um, and how they related things. And one of the things I wanted to also highlight, you know, also about dualism, you know, is the rabbinic, rabbinic teachings and how um, how the Jewish people culturally looked at things, especially uh, the, the, the rabbis or the teachers, um, how they looked at things when it came to gauging uh, Old Testament scripture, the law of Moses and the prophets, right? Uh, their thought and thinking is not dualistic, right? Um, they see only God. There's only God. There's only one power. Uh, there is no dueling power. Um, and so even their notion and idea, and I posted the picture, I mean, the video of the rabbi, you know, teaching about, you know, how they view Satan versus how we view Satan or the Satan, um, according to uh, our traditions and uh, with respect to scripture. And so they look at Satan in a totally different light. Uh, and so the question comes from, OK, if, if Satan was presented you know, according to the Old Testament in this particular light, you know, when did he gain all this power, <laughs> you know, to put him on equilibrium with God over in the New Testament? You know, what did we read more into the text than what the text was saying? Um, did we pull out more of of what we thought the text was saying and it actually wasn't? Um, and so those are important questions to ask. And so I want to take you guys on a journey um, to maybe explore uh, uh and to consider that a lot of this teachings that have become very popular, that have become very ingrained um, in, in popular Christian ideas uh, may sound good, uh, but it's actually not Bible. Um, and, uh, and we can, I can account, you know, for some of the, the trauma that has been placed upon people because of uh, extreme perspectives when it comes to spiritual warfare and demonology um, and things like that. Now, uh, we may account for our experiences um, in, in seeing certain things and quote unquote deliverance, um, or we may use the Bible and say, well, Jesus cast out demons, you know, or was it demons or was it mindset? Now, again, according to their cultural uh context and understanding there was no modern medicine. Uh, and so uh, if a person had a seizure, according to, because a lot of dualism, um, uh, uh, Jewish mysticism um, and surrounding culture, you know, uh, thinking was embedded in the culture, not just you break teaching and understanding. You have to think about the larger context of culture with respect to the setting of Jesus's day. Because you even had the apostles ask Jesus, you know, who sinned that caused this man to blind? See, so, you know, this cause and effect, you know, something that started because of a sin, you know, and so they automatically thought that because of a sin, a curse occurred. You know, that's their thinking, a curse, you know, disobey God, you get a curse. And so that was the spiritual implications of their understanding. Um, and so everything was rooted in this good versus evil uh, type type concept. And so uh, how many of us have encountered, you know, these extreme views and perspectives um, that have caused more hurt and harm than actually helped people? Um, and so, you know, whether your own, you know, demons are real or demons aren't real, um, it's still enough to consider um, of what Jesus finished and what that truly means, you know, uh, uh, for us and the impact that they can have when we truly wrap our hearts and minds around uh, our emphasis and focus in Christ. And so, you know, if 
there is the belief or ascribe to the belief of demons and devils. Uh, at least we can all agree um, if that's your understanding that um, if you're seated in Christ, in Christ Jesus in heavenly places, right? Far above principalities and powers, um, there's still no equal footing of force uh, with respect to a person's understanding about demons and devils. Uh, but I believe that we are uh, in a time of reformation where you know certain ideas are being challenged, certain popular Christian ideas are being challenged with respect to a greater understanding of scripture and uh, a greater emphasis on Christ and Christ alone. Um, and so I, I just wanted to kind of nudge you, you know, in that regard. Um, um, I take a non-dualistic perspective. You know, I don't think of a Satan out of there. If there, if there's any aspect of a Satan, the accuser that I've dealt with in my life, it was the one between my ears here um, uh, or the aspects of the human ego, you know, that part of you that makes you think and consider yourself just as a mere man and how we taught people uh, according to our so social constructs and in life. You know, you have to strive to get ahead. That doesn't take away from our responsibilities um, and aspects of that. But Jesus said that uh, um, your father knows what you have need of even before you ask. You know, in order to be a man, you got to take care of your family. And I'm not downgrading that as well. But, you know, we've we put these social roles. You know, a man is to do this, this, this and this. A woman is to do this and this. You know, all of that goes into, you know, these certain mindsets that we have. You know, instead of seeing ourselves in Christ and seeing ourselves uh, with the reality uh, of Christ in us, the hope of glory. You know, we, we still have these dualistic perspectives and ideas instead of seeing ourselves as one. You know, we, we, we put ourselves in certain camps and groups and, and perpetuate more division when when the scripture tells us that the world would know us because of the love that we have for the brethren. Um, and so considering rest versus warfare um, and considering these thoughts and what we have in Christ, considering what you've experienced in your Christian experience and learning and understanding, um, and considering rest versus warfare and considering those implications um, in your writing assignment. So consider those things, consider, you know, some of the points that I just highlighted um, in, 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 in the course content and what we covered. Uh, consider all of those thoughts. Uh, I'm not telling you uh, to not believe in a Satan or not to believe in demons, but I am challenging you uh, to revisit, you know, some of our thinking to revisit, you know, some of those popular ideas and concepts um, and, and consider maybe, maybe, uh, and I'll, I'm not here to say if it's heresy or, you know, uh, is, is this or that. I, I don't want to judge it in that way, uh, but I'll say this, uh, uh, right thinking leads to right living. Um, and so if the information that we're receiving and is being processed through a certain lens, um, that can greatly impact our thinking. And, and if it greatly impacts our thinking, it can greatly impact our lives um, and our lifestyle and how we interact the, with the world around us and how we see the world around us. Um, uh, more so than uh, what we have in Christ, the power um, that we have because of Christ and, and, and not just who we are, but what we are in the sense of what we have because of Christ. And so uh, I hope I kind of, you know, uh, uh, stirred the part a bit, stirred it for you, kind of provoked you a little bit. <laughs> I'm known to do that. Um, and so uh, I don't engage in spiritual warfare. Um, I don't um, have demons and devils I fight and have to bind. I don't pray binding prayers. Um, I'm learning and continuing to walk in the rest um, that that is accessible and available uh, for all of humanity and for all of mankind. And, and I'm trying to stretch my legs out and, and walk in that more. Um, and so there's a reconditioning that's taking place for many of us and many of you in the different courses in the class that you have to take here at World Bible School University. You may have came in thinking one thing and, and you're being challenged and, and you're having a metanoia moment. Uh, as the scripture says, your repentance, that's what metanoia means, is to change the way you think. And so I'm hoping that you will have a metanoia moment 
you know, as we continue to track through this course, material and content of this particular class of spiritual warfare or rest versus warfare. Uh, so this is your professor, and this is uh, my lecture notes and perspective. Again, um, please, you know, go over the material, uh, maybe review this video a few times, you know, ponder, think about what I said, think about what we shared in the course material and content, and then write your paper. Okay, one to two pages, uh, nothing long, nothing, you know, huge, but I want to hear your heart. That's most important. I want to hear your heart class. Okay, God bless you. And I, I look forward to reading these papers. God bless you guys. Love you. Bye-bye.